Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about something that I realized after I just did the video revealing that Mammon is Maimon or Maimonides. And it also refers to money. But I discovered that Mammon was the son of Satan or Lucifer and that he was considered to be a fallen angel. I suddenly realized that with the Abrahamic house that's in the UAE, it's represented by the Roman Catholic Church, the mosque, and the synagogue. I suddenly realized that you have in the three an unholy trinity of sorts. So, first of all, Islam wor worships the greatest deceiver, which is Satan, as God. So that would be God. And then in the synagogue, you have those that are following Maimonides, which is Mammon, which is the son of Lucifer. So you've got like the father and the son, the fallen angel. And then you have the Roman Catholic Church. What can I say about that? <laughs> um, you've also got the false prophet, a prophet who claims to be a prophet that was not a biblical prophet in Islam. And you've got the Roman Catholic Church, which they claim in the Eucharist the Holy Spirit changes it to real flesh or meat and real blood for the wine. So this is truly like an unholy trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But we know that the Eucharist cannot be accurate because of the fact that when Jesus took the unleavened matzah and broke it, it never turned into meat. It never turned into living flesh. It didn't turn into his flesh. It was just a representative of what he was about to do, telling us that he is the true bread of life. And the wine was representative of his blood, which is the cup of redemption. That's what it was supposed to represent, but they've turned it into something of cannibalism that when they partake of the Eucharist and they think that it really turns into human flesh and really turns into human blood, then this is something unholy, not holy. So isn't that interesting that in the last end of days, this unholy trinity is supposed to rise up. And I never knew that Satan had a son, but apparently he does, and the son's name is Mammon. So when you had the ancient Sanhedrin, you had the ancient monarchy of Israel, they were, one of the reasons why God was angry with them is because they were you know, trading merchandise with other nations and fattening themselves with riches. And so the wealth and the money and the greed go along with the ancient monarchy and the ancient Sanhedrin. And God kept sending Israel these prophets who they would stone because they didn't like the words coming out of their mouths because it was a little different than what they were used to, and they were used to being in charge. So, in the last days, we've got this revived Sanhedrin that's following their master, Mammon. And one of the Sanhedrin rabbis said to the Turk, Adnan Oktar, that when they come together with the Arab nations and they, you know, find their Messiah or enthrone him, that there would be delicacies as dust 
And when I heard that, I just about fell out of my chair because I knew that that was a prophecy that the delicacies would be as dust when Mystery Babylon is destroyed. So, um, I always kept that in the back of my mind. If I ever hear this saying, I'm going to know I'm hearing the fulfillment of prophecy is about to happen. So, Israel has sold one port to India, one port to China, and this is going to allow massive trade with the ships in the Mediterranean Sea. And things are not going to be going well in the time of Jacob's trouble. This Sanhedrin has very evil thoughts and ideas about other people, particularly women, even the, their own Jewish women, and other Jews. They even said that other Jews should die if they were not following Maimonides' codified law of uh, the Noahide laws that were in the Talmud. And I think this is going to be getting worse because it's a movement that they started and they've started Noahide churches within the U.S. And Rabbi Richmond, that used to be the director of the Temple Institute, he would go visit those Noahide churches. Um, we know that the unholy trinity, one of the things that they do is they create a unified one world government with a one world religion that they can rule over with their king on the throne. With that Sanhedrin that has the things from Lucifer in it. They, Maimonides was from Spain, Cordoba, Spain, so he was a Sephardic Jew at the time that Islam was very prevalent in Spain with the Islamic invaders. So when he codified the Talmud, he incorporated not only um, in Hebrew for the Jews, but also in Arabic for the Muslims. So the Islamic ideas are in his works. And it's very hateful about the church, saying that Christians should die. It's very hateful about the Messiah. And I won't repeat any of their blasphemies. But um, realizing that you've got like God the Father in Islam, the false prophet, Muhammad. You've got the um, Maimonides, Mammon, that is the son of Lucifer. And you've got this unholy spirit right there in the Abrahamic house. Then we are right there at the end of days because that is the unholy trinity and they're going to try to have a global system that everybody has to be subject to. Also, the Sanhedrin rabbis in Israel, the CEO even of the Temple Institute had said that anybody who will not obey the seven Noahide laws under the Talmud that is the codified law as done by Maimon, um, he said they would be killed. So this is their thought about the Gentiles, the church, everything. And this is why you see Jews going against Jews. Jews want to kill Jews. And a lot of the church doesn't understand why is this happening? Because they lump them all into one group. And you've got the reform, the conservative, the restructionist, maybe the same as the reform. And you've got the Messianic Jews that are believers in Messiah Yeshua. All of those, they say, as well as any atheists or anybody that doesn't even follow God, that's a Jew, then in their minds, they should be eliminated. Um, the situation that happened in Israel, there's no way, there is no way that the Mossad 
and the other um, security intelligence shouldn't have seen this attack coming. I'm kind of appalled that they've even compared it to 9-11, which is nothing like 9-11 at all. That was a horrific, horrific case that's never been compared with anything. And it's not like the Holocaust either, because millions and millions of people died in the Holocaust. And it was more on the order of an attack that happened in Paris. So I don't know why they're comparing it to these other situations. Yes, it was bad and horrific, but to go that far with it is very strange, I think. So I talked to you about the Mossad and 9-11. I talked to you about Amir and him talking about the Mossad, writing books about the Mossad. And then here he is again telling you everything that's happening in Israel. And Eric Stackelbeck said that he, that Amir was on the front lines. So how can he know all the military stuff that's going on unless he's an insider? I know that he was a major in the army, but he's retired. So anybody can sign up to be in the Mossad. Any na anybody in any nation, they just have to be uh, qualified and accepted. So there's no doubt he qualifies. He said that he was there at the towers on 9-11. He said that he had friends who were on the Jersey side and that's where the Mossad was captured, celebrating, holding the lighter up, taking a selfie with the towers burning behind them, holding a lighter up to the tower. They found box cutters that were the same box cutters that the Arabs that the CIA already knew about, already knew about their pilot training and everything. They knew it was inside. So, you know, this being compared to a 9-11 event says to me that Mossad, which is there in Tel Aviv, allowed things to happen. They probably are hoping to accelerate the red heifer sacrifice and putting their king on the throne. They've got to do something drastic to turn things upside down. And um, one of the things is that no help came for like eight or nine hours. This is what happened on 9-11. You know, the, the fighter jets, my mother kept saying, where are our fighter jets? They never came. And when they did finally get some, they were clear across, you know, the eastern seaboard, you know, like down in the south and up in the north. But they never sent any from Andrews Air Force Base, which is right there in D.C. area. So... There's no doubt in my mind that Charlie Kirk was saying something that I was thinking too, and that is that um, you know that Netanyahu. Ah, I forgot what it was I was going to say. Netanyahu. Oh, it was that he was, there were about to be 100,000 at least people protesting his judicial reforms, which have been happening because they want to enthrone a king eventually and reestablish the ancient monarchy. And there are people, unfortunately, that are still preaching that the Antichrist is going to receive a deadly head wound and be revived as Satan. And this is not an accurate rendition. The true rendition is that the ancient monarchy of Israel had the deadly head wound. The head of state was the king. God brought a sword against it. That's the deadly wound. And then in Revelation, what we have is that revived monarchy 
the deadly head wound. The head of state will be reinstated when they put a king on the throne. This is what they're trying to accomplish in Israel. I think all of these things are culminating in with these enemies coming against them because they can see how close we are to Jesus actually coming and reigning and Satan's trying to have a last hoorah, trying to prevent this one world Sanhedrin group from taking over. So anyway, we truly do have this unholy trinity right there at the Abrahamic house. Like, subscribe, and share, please, and please support my channel. Um, there's a big issue right now. Um, I have no monetization really happening. They have not monetized my last three videos, and I, I sent them my tax information and everything, and they said they approved it, and then they didn't send me anything. So I've got to go figure it out and try to get it up and running because they are not sending me a dime. So, you know, I'm just barely scraping by and I really, if I didn't need the help, I wouldn't have to ask for help. And I, I just pray that if you can, you will do that. It's paypal.me forward slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O. -O -O. And... If you want to read about the true story of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who's coming to reign in Jerusalem, you can read my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, available at olivepresspublisher.com. It also was acquired at Harvard University Library through a Judaica endowment that was set up in about 1929-1930. That was a miracle of God, and um, I pray that this testimony will go out to the world. So, I just wanted to clarify about the unholy trinity is rising. Realizing that Mammon is the son of Satan, Lucifer. And right there in the synagogue in the UAE. So all of these things are coming together. And they're going to come together in Jerusalem when they try to put this one world government together. And with that, I'll just say good night, everyone.